Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Kumal Kamal Shekhawat and I hope you all are doing good and keeping safe. I create videos on how to do econometric analysis and data analysis using various softwares, namely SPSS, eViews, Stata and R. So if you are new to my channel, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and do watch the video till end. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how to perform the vector error correction model in eViews. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, the VECM model is used to test the presence of a long run association between the variables. So if you want to find out or estimate whether there is a presence of long run association between the variables in your model, you need to perform the VECM model. Okay, and first of all, you need to ensure that all your targeted variables are stationary. So you need to first check for the unit root and to find out how to perform the unit root test or how to find out whether a series is stationary or not, you can watch one of my videos on how to perform the unit root test. I have also attached the link in the description box. Okay, so you can go through that video. So once you have estimated or find out that all the series or targeted variables are stationary at level, you can perform the VECM model. Okay. And before running the VECM model, you need to first run the VAR model, that is vector autoregressive model. Uh, so first you need to select all your concerned variables and you need to open these variables as VAR. Okay. So in the bar specification, you need to first select the standard bar and you need to keep rest of the things as default. Although I have already uploaded a video on how to run the bar model in eViews, you can go through that video. I have explained in detail how to run the bar model. I'm just quickly running the bar model over here. So once you have selected all the things, you need to click on OK. So these are the results for your bar model. Now you need to go to view and then select leg structure and leg length criteria because before performing the VECM model, you need to find out the appropriate leg length, okay? So here in the legs to include, you can select any leg that need to be included in the model and then click okay. So these are the results for bar leg order selection criteria. So you can see there are various criteria mentioned like a kayak information criteria, squats criteria, Helen Quinn criteria. Okay. So you can refer any one of these criteria to report your leg length. Okay. You just need to mention in your research that you have followed this particular type of leg length criteria okay so usually a kayak information criteria is followed so you can see over here the asterisk mark is in the first leg okay so you have now find out that the leg length that need to be included is one okay so once you have estimated the leg or the selection criteria you need to run any of the co-integration method. Okay, you can either run Johnson co-integration test or if you are dealing with the panel data, then you can either run Pedroni co-integration test or Fisher co-integration test. Okay, so you need to go to quick, then select group statistic and then Johnson co-integration test, right? So these are the two targeted variables and then click okay. okay. All right, so you can see over here. Uh, so if you want to fo follow the Petroni co-integration test, okay, uh, you need to select all the specifications. And uh, let me tell you that I have already uploaded a detailed video on all types of co-integration tests like Petroni, Cow co-integration test, Jonathan co-integration test, okay, and Fisher co-integration test. 
So you can refer to all those videos, right? I'm quickly running the co-integration test in this video because the objective is to know how to run the VECM model and how to interpret the results of VECM model, right? So you can follow any of the co-integration test to find out the results for the co-integration, okay? So once you have selected all the specifications, you need to click OK. All right. So these are the results for the co-integration test. OK. And for the co-integration test, uh, we follow the thumb rule of probability. So if the probability value is less than 0 0.05, that is, if the probability value is less than 5% level of significance, then the series are co-integrated. OK. So you usually follow the probability values the, which are mentioned over here okay you can see these probability values right so if the probability values are less than five percent level of significance then the series are co-integrated right and if the series are co-integrated then you need to need to perform the vector error correction model okay you can't perform the var model to find out the co-integration between the variables, right? So if there is co-integration, in that case, you need to again go to your targeted variables. So these two were the variables and you need to open these again as bar. Now in the bar specification, in the bar type, you need to select vector error correction instead of standard bar. Okay, and according to the archaic information criteria, the appropriate lag length was one. So you need to mention one over here and the endogenous variables are your targeted two variables and C here is for the constant and in the co-integration, you can keep the things as default. Okay, and here this is choosing the deterministic trend specification wherein three has been chosen okay and afterwards you need to click okay so these are the results for vector error correction estimates okay and how do you interpret the results for this so in the square brackets as it is mentioned the t statistics are in the square brackets and standard errors are in these circle brackets okay so here in the results, you can see if the t-statistics is greater than 1.96, then that coefficient is significant, okay? So here you can see, like for this co-integration equation between this variable EC and CO2, the t-statistics value is less than 1.96, okay? So the coefficient is not significant because this value and this value, both these values are less than 1.96, okay? So the coefficient is not significant and there is no longer an association between these two variables, right? Similarly, you can interpret the result for another variable wherein the first one is CO2 and the second one is EC, okay? And the T statistics value is 0.91. Okay, you can see this is 0.91. So if this value is less than 1.96, then the coefficient is not significant. And if this value is greater than 1.96, then the coefficient is significant. So here in this, the value is less than 1.96. This means that these two variables have no longer an association. Okay. So in this manner, you can interpret the results for all your variables, all your targeted variables, and you can find out whether there is a presence of long-run association between the variables or not, right? So this is how you can perform the vector error correction model in eViews. So I hope you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.